Hi everyone, Tommy here. In this video, I'll be sharing some interesting facts about another African country, this time Mauritius. Now, Mauritius is an island country in the Indian Ocean. It is located off the eastern coast of Africa. Physiographically, it is part of what's called the Mascarene Islands. The capital is Port Louis. Mauritius is one of the most popular destinations for tourism in Africa owing to its tropical climate and beautiful beaches. Now, because of its geographical location and centuries of colonialism, the people of Mauritius are highly diverse in ethnicity, culture, language and faith. It is the only country in Africa where Hinduism is the dominant religion with most adherents. Although English is the official language in Mauritius, it is spoken by a very small percentage of the population. Uh, Creole, a French-based patois, is spoken by uh, about four-fifths of the population and it's the lingua franca of the country. Other languages spoken on the island include Hindi, Chinese, Marathi, Tamil, Telugu and Urdu. You observe that a lot of those languages are Asian in origin and I'll get to why that is the case. Mauritians commonly speak two or three or even more languages similar to many other Africans anyway and the educational system supports a wide range of language instruction. The island's government is closely modelled on the Westminster parliamentary system and Mauritius is highly ranked for democracy and for economic and political freedom. Mauritius is categorized as very high in the Human Development Index. Life expectancy in Mauritius is about 70 years for men and more than 75 years for women. It's just interesting how women tend to always outlive men in most countries. Okay, now the life expectancy in Mauritius is actually more than the world average and is well above the average for many other African countries. About two thirds of the country population is younger than age 30, which is quite high for many other African countries as well. As well. Places like Nigeria and Nigeria within the range 16 and 18 there about so yeah it's quite high for an African country. Mauritius was uninhabited for a very long period in history and had lots of plants and animals that could not be found elsewhere except in that island. Some of them have since become extinct as humans began encroaching into the island starting from about the 16th century. Although the island was probably known to Arab seafarers from the 10th century or earlier, it was visited by the Portuguese in the early 16th century. They did not settle on the island, that's the Portuguese, until the Dutch took possession of it from 1598 to 1710. It was the Dutch who named it Mauritius for a certain person called Maurice of Nassau. Maurice of Nassau, so they called it Mauritius, whatever. Now, and uh, they attempted to settle the island between 1638 and 1658 uh, and again between 1664 and 1710 but they abandoned all of these attempts and they left it to the pirates you know it never really worked but that was after all the havocs had been wrecked on species on there one of them being the dodo bird i wrote something about it a while back i'll drop a link to that in the description down below now, in 1721, the French East India Company occupied Mauritius, which was renamed Ile de France, and settlement proceeded slowly over the next 40 years. In 1767, however, the French Crown took over the island's administration from the French East India Company. Now, the French authorities brought African slaves to the island and established sugar planting as a main industry and, colon and the colony actually prospered. However, in 1814, British sovereignty was confirmed by the Treaty of Paris over the island, you know, during the wars between France and Britain, and France, uh, Britain won obviously, so yeah, they took over the island from France. Now, the name Mauritius was reinstated by the British, but in circumstances quite unique for a British colony, the customs, laws, and language remain very much French and the influence is still there till today. Now, pressure generated by the British abolitionist movement early in the 19th century ended slavery there in 1835 and slaves were replaced by indentured laborers from India. Now, this is why today Mauritius has lots of languages with Asian origin. 
due to you know that era the country's modern day indo pakistani population stems from this program uh, of replacing slavery with indentured servitude which probably they thought was a lot more probably better now by the time it ended in the 1920s however almost half a million indentured laborers had come from india to work on the sugar plantations in 1965 three years before mauritius became independent the uk split off the chagos archipelagos from mauritian territory and also split islands of other islands like the Adabra. Farqua and Desroches from Seychelles. Now I'm not sure if I'm getting the pronunciation all right, but you get the idea. Now and they formed all of these islands from the British Indian Ocean Territory, which still exists till today. The local population was forcibly expelled, and the largest island, as the Diego Garcia, was leased to the United States, where they built a military base and they still have it there today so and since that period the uk has restricted restricted access to the chagos archipelago barring entry to casual tourists to the media and even the former inhabitants very sad anyway the sovereignty of the chagos archipelagos has uh, long been a point of disagreement between britain uh, which administered the territory and Mauritius, which maintained a claim to it as it should be. Now, the archipelago was the subject of several court cases in the 21st century regarding some of the former inhabitants' rights to return and a proposal for the creation of a protected marine reserve around it. Of note was a case at the International Court of Justice. Now, during the, that proceeding, Mauritius stated that it had been coerced into giving up the islands of the Chagos Archipelago in exchange for its independence in 1968. The court's ruling issued in 2019 found that Britain's decolonization of Mauritius had not been lawfully completed and that Britain should end its administration of the Chagos Archipelago as soon as possible. The court's ruling, however, was advisory opinion and not legally binding, so it cannot be enforced if it was just asking Britain to, okay, just be nice and return it, you know, if you want to, but we are not asking you to do that, just be nice, you know, just be considerate, which is quite unfortunate. It just shows the way the world actually functions, where if you're a powerful country, you can impose your will on the less powerful ones i doubt anyone will do that to china of today because obviously china has become a superpower so i i don't think it's right i think it's their territory it should be given over to them you can't just take a territory from some other country i mean this is the 21st century the age of imperialism is long gone i mean give back to mauritius what's mauritius Anyway, like I said at the beginning as well, Mauritius is a very lovely uh, tourism destination. I think it's one of the places where I want to really visit as well at some point, at some point. I've never been there obviously, but I really want to be there at some point. Anyway, that's that on Mauritius. And for more country fact videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification. See you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.